everyone, it's Lorelai. In this devlog, I wanted to go over how I made my slime creature. Now, funny story about this slime creature, I'm not even going to be using <laughs> a slime in my game. Uh, but as you can see, it can attack me. It can attack me from all sides. It has a special little animation, which I thought was well done. That's just me. Let's see. Yep. And then uh, I can kill it like that. Uh, so there's still a lot of stuff I want to do with uh, this this action, with this object, with enemies in general, and, and the they're dying. Uh, but that's just the general attack and death object that I made, and I'm happy with it. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a slime, and my game's about a drought, so I don't think we're going to be using any slimes in this world. I think with a magical drought happening, all of the slime monsters would have dried up or something by now. Uh, so slime ended up just being my test, my test monster. Slime is from the Time Fantasy assets, again, so all of these are going to be from Time Fantasy. That's what I'm sticking with for this project. I imported it the same way I did for everything else. So if we go under resources, we can see that this is uh, all of the monsters. But I think what I'm going to do is later I'm going to export slime or rather rat because I don't need slime really. But I do need rat. <laughs> that is going to be a, an enemy, a monster. So I'm going to make rat its own sprite sheet similar to the character. So the, the walking and then an attacking just on one sprite or one sheet. Uh, right now I, I have them all for testing purposes. Okay, so here's my monster. And all I did was I added an animation similar to Deirdre, where I've got slime, I've got slime attack, and then I've got slime death. I have three motions right now. And then I've got rat. This, this was just for test testing purposes, but I can actually, I'm going to delete rat. Go away, rat. <laughs> no one likes you. Uh, so I made I made all of this the same as how I made all of my other animations. It did take me a little bit of time to figure out exactly what was going on when I attacked the slime and when the slime was attacking me. And I'm going to actually turn off what was the issue. And then it ended up being this invincibility after receiving damage. I'm gonna turn that off and you're gonna see what you're gonna see what happens. So if I go up to this slime. He like immediately one shots me <laughs> and and I one shot him. And it turns out that's because of this uh, this temporary invincibility after receiving damage being turned off. We want that on because what was happening is that whenever Deirdre or Slime was in their attack animation, their attack mode. So if we go to the attack animation here, um, this attack collision or attack detection was happening for the entire length of the of the animation. So it was happening for 35 frames. This, this slime would attack and it would just be constant. Every frame, it would be dealing damage. And so that's why it seems like it was dealing a ton of damage in a second, because it was, <laughs> because it was. So what we needed to do was make sure that you're invincible for a little bit. This is something I'm going to need to balance um, and I'll figure it out later, right? Um, but but that's how it is. That's how it is now. And so now when the slime attacks me, it attacks, uh, but it's it's not so crazy. It's not so nuts, right? Um, so let's go into how I made the slime. Okay, so I made the slime like any other object. It is an enemy object. Uh, let's go see the settings. Yeah, it's just an enemy group, whatever, right? <laughs> it's all the same. I have these two events that are actually gone over in the tutorial. I said in, in one of my other videos, definitely go through the tutorial uh, because it tells you how to go to, from the wandering to the go to player. So here I have it set to just like regular slime and regular slime does not have an attack. OK, no attack detection. And again, that's because if this slime was constantly attacking, um, it would be a problem for attack cooldown, uh, but <laughs> I'll get to that later. So first is wandering. Under wandering, we have this runtime action to, well, you can't see where it is, of course. Okay, so <laughs> template move settings, which is here, template move settings, and random, right? Just the, just random movement. This is very similar to RPG Maker uh, with, with random movement. So that's all this is, I believe. Yes, that's all that is. Okay, then I have a condition to go to the player when, and here I have discovered other objects. In the tutorial, 
in the tutorial, the tutorial tells you to do this. The tutorial tells you to go to distance with other objects um, and then distance with other objects and then set distance. Uh, I think it had me set it to like to like a like 20 or something like that. But we'll say like 100. Right. We'll set it to 100 uh, and then say less than. OK. And it says dots here. They mean pixels. I don't know why. I mean, it's called pixel game maker, not dot game maker. I don't know. but <laughs> they, They're calling it dots. So. Don't don't get confused. It means pixel. I think anyway. I'm pretty sure. Um, so if it's less than a hundred dots away from from what uh, from the player group, okay, which includes our main character, but it would also include any other playable characters you might be. So you could also set it by specifically Deirdre, uh, but in my game we're gonna have multiple play playable characters. So any player group, then right if it if it's if it's that then it goes to player. Okay, and then this go to player is another template move settings, but this one is move towards nearby object player group. Okay, okay, easy, easy mode, right? Okay, so if it sees that you're nearby, it'll go to you. If it sees that you're less than 100 dots away, then it'll go to you. Uh, that was how I had it programmed at first, but then I discovered this other thing we have, let me delete that. We have a thing called field of vision, comma, lighting. And this is under the cog wheel that you have to turn on. So set field of vision, comma, lighting. Uh, and so that's what I did. I set a field of vision and it's really freaking cool. So <laughs> let's go here. Uh, what you just, you have to add it you have to add it and you can set the field of vision or you can set it as lighting. Okay, I haven't played with lighting yet. I can't wait to figure that out. But right now it's just a field of vision. And I kept everything default, right? I didn't change anything. Uh, I'm gonna need to because if we preview it, you can see the circle. That's that's the field of vision. I'm gonna set it so that it's like uh, below the slime, like more below the slime, because right now it's it's a little off center. Um, and that's that's fine. It's center of this object, but because my object is 128 by 128, it's the, the center is all wrong. I could also use the connection point, uh, but. Uh, well, I'll figure that out. I'll figure that out. Uh, <laughs> so field of vision, really cool. So then when you go into uh, the condition settings, you can say discovered other objects and discover discovered other objects sets your sets whatever field of vision that you might have. And it doesn't even need to be this entire um, circle. You can set it to like, let's see what 90 looks like. 90 should just be like a triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is actually kind of cool. It looks like they're wearing helmets, like like light lights mining helmets or something. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so you could do something like that, and then you can rotate it, like with this with this button. So now it's gonna be rotated this this direction. So yeah, and I'm pretty sure there's a way you can set it to rotate with them, but I'm just gonna set it to 360 and preview. Yeah, I just like the little circle and then you can say how big it is. So this is 100, you can set it to like 50. And it's gonna be smaller, right? It's a much smaller circle. Uh, let's go back to 100. And okay, so that's the condition is discovered other objects. If, if you see a player group in your field of vision, then you go to player and that's it. And that's the template move settings that we said move towards nearby object player group. So if I play, you can see that happening. So if I go in their field of vision, He's coming. He's coming. Oh, Lord, he's coming. He's coming after me. And then if I leave the field of vision, he goes back to wandering. And I go back in and then he's after me. And then I leave and he's chilling. Okay. Uh, so that's what this condition is, is discovered other objects, right? It's the same field of vision setting, except I have it turned off, off right here. So when it does not discover that you're in its field of vision, then it is off. Uh, but... But once it does get to you, I have this condition. Now this one took me a while to get and I'm, I'm not convinced it's the best way to do it. But once it goes to player and then it has a distance of 40 with the player, um, again, I don't, I don't know. This is just what works right now for this monster. I might have to change this for every other monster that I have on the map. But right now, if it's less than 40 dots, it switches to attack mode. Okay, and that works for me. And I, I tried doing other things. I tried doing contact with 
collision detection of another object. That wasn't working and I don't know why. <laughs> so this distance with other objects was working and I'm happy with it. Again, if there's another way, then that's great, but that's what's working right now. And then we go into attack mode. And attack mode is just like Deirdre's attack. You just select the attack uh, motion, the attack animation. And this is this animation has the attack detection, the attack collision. And so that's what's gonna be dealing damage to you. And then attack goes to attack cooldown after motion animation plays to the end. And so once it, it does its attack, then it goes into cooldown. Cooldown is just regular slime. Um, and it's just chilling. It's just hanging out for a sec. Uh, and the cooldown is determined by this link after a certain time passes. I have it set to two seconds right now. And this also I don't think is the best way to do it, but this is what's working for me. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm happy with it. So after two seconds of not attacking, it goes back to attacking. So as you can see, we go into its field of vision. It attacks, it's chilling, it attacks, it's chilling, it attacks, it's chilling, right? And I think that's I think that's how it should be. Because if it wasn't chilling, if if there was no attack cooldown, it would just be constantly attacking, which is fine. Uh, but it, it it feels like way too much. So I might actually have to change this attack cooldown to like one second or something instead of two, but that's the way it is. That's the way it is right now. Let me show you how I made the slime uh, attack animation, which I don't know if you even noticed, <laughs> but it's it's a special animation. Let's hide that. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> it's it's really simple. It's super simple, but uh, it's better than no attack animation at all, I think. And I did this with the program Juice Effects. Juice Effects. I got this on itch for 15 bucks. Um, I think it's great. I think it's great for what I need. Basically, you can put in any sort of pixel character and play with these um, things on the side, <laughs> play with these settings on the side and simulate and, and and it'll do the thing. It'll like do a thing, right? So this one is attack. This is an attack. Uh, they've got presets. So we've got jump, right? Jump. And then there's like hits, strong hits. Drift. There's a whole bunch of stuff here like teleport, that looks cool. Uh, and then you can you can edit it, right? You can, you, you can revise the settings and change it to what you want. And then you render it and save it as a PNG. It'll save it as a, as a sprite sheet for you. And so that's what uh, this is. Yep, that's what this is. Um, it, it came with a ton of unnecessary sprites. So if I delete this or disable this layer mask, you can see that it came with a bunch of unnecessary sprites in the sprite sheet. I really only needed these ones. <laughs> so I masked them out in Photoshop uh, and then added all of the directions. So I did I did the same thing, but for all of the directions. And then I just added them to one big sprite sheet and then imported it into Pixel Maker. And that's what this is. And then they, they deal damage this way. So, so that was cool. That was fun. I'm glad that I was able to figure out uh, an attack animation without being artistic. <laughs> There's one more thing that I did, and that is the death action. There's actually three things going on here when the slime dies. And let's, let's see what's going on. So I hit it, and it kind of explodes into that green sparkle stuff, which I still need to kind of fine tune, but it is what it is right now. <laughs> so there's three things going on. The first one is the die common action. We talked about common actions in a previous video. Basically, I have it set to if any condition is met, if HP is zero. This is the first thing that I needed to add was HP is zero. And we'll talk about the switch thing later. HP is zero, then do something, then die. Okay. And that's this action is die. It took me so long to figure out how the heck I was going to to do this, but this this works and I'm really happy with it. So first you set the, the motion to slime death. Slime death is this explosion. Is this explosion of, it's like a particle effect kind of. It's almost like a particle effect, okay? So that's the slime death. So it's gonna do that, okay? And then what it's going to do is it is going to first change a switch, which is, Really neat. I want to talk about switches too for Pixel Game Maker. Um, in RPG Maker, you have switches, but they're all global changes, uh, global switches. Sorry. And um, in Pixel Game Maker, you can have self 
switches, right? So what local? Are they local switches? <laughs> I don't code, so uh, you can have local. So so it doesn't clog up your entire your entire game by saying like slime death, slime one death, slime two death, you know, like that. Uh, so I can just say this object's death switch, which I think is awesome. Um, so this turned on a death switch. <laughs> It turned it on and then it executed object action. Explode. Okay. Explode. And so actually I didn't need to put any motion here. I'm gonna, I, I will, but um, I, I don't need to because it's actually turning on a switch and then immediately executing another action, which is explode. You cannot set another action to another or set an executed action object action to another common action. It has to be like a regular action. So I've got explode here. So this die flips a switch and then executes explode. And explode is slime death. Explode is slime death here. Okay. And this doesn't actually do anything, but it is linked to death. So after this animation, if motion animation plays to the end, so after explode does its little animation, Okay, it goes to death and death is no motion and it's set to destroy object, which I can't show you on the left here because it's frozen. <laughs> it's it's a it's a really weird UI, but I'm happy I'm happy with it. Uh but destroy object and so now it's gone. Now it's gone. And that's that's it. That's how I did that's how I did the death. Um it's working for me and I'm happy with it. So HP is zero. Oh, I didn't explain the switch. So HP is zero. Um let's open this up. HP is zero and also self switch of dead is off. Okay, that's really important. <laughs> self switch of dead is off. Then it will go into die and die is turning the switch on and then uh, going into the explode action. And this was really important because if I didn't have the switch, it would just loop in on itself because HP will always be zero when it's, you know, at zero, it'll always be zero. <laughs> so HP is zero, um, execute object action. But because this is a common event, it would just constantly, it would get stuck here is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it would get stuck in this common action. So we needed a way to turn off this common action by saying, if this variable is off, you can do the thing. And also HP is zero, then you can do the thing. But if it's on, then you can't do the thing because there's an and here as important. You can also set it to change if all conditions are met. It doesn't matter because there's an and, I'm pretty sure. I hope I explained that well enough. <laughs> I hope I did a good job explaining that. Um, I can quickly explain the particles. So you can actually go into the animations and make your own particles. So I would, I have a particles folder already and then I would just say new particle animation and then you can choose one of these to start with. So I believe I started with Sparks. I did this, I did this on stream. I played around with it and I opened up Sparks and you can preview it like that. It's just a quick little spark. And then I made it green. And that was my that was my animation. So you can technically do it inside of the engine. Uh, I'm going to delete that. But I wanted a pixel effect. So I have another program that I got on itch called pixel effects designer. Wow. And this one's really fun. You you make your own particle system and it and it renders a particle system for you in this window, but then it makes it pixelated in this one, and then you can turn it into uh, frames for, for a sprite sheet, for a sprite sheet. So here was my my little animation, and then if I go to the render, then it then it renders it for me. So, so that was fun. I'm not very good at particles, but I was able to just mess around with all of these numbers and things and stuff, <laughs> and I made a pretty okay, um, little particle effect. So when you kill the slime, it does that. There's still a few things I want to figure out, um, but right now it's functional and I'm really happy with it. <laughs> I think that's all I wanted to talk about for my slime object. I hope, I hope you learned something. I hope you're enjoying this little series that I have and um, can't wait to show more of my game with you. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.